Hello and welcome to another edition of Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this week I finally step away from a run of Matchbox castings to this frankly stunning Siku Audi 100 LS. Erroneously named the Audi 100 SL on the base, the casting was produced between 1970 and 1982. It always came painted metallic green with a yellow interior piece and a red steering wheel. It later had a yellow tinted window fitted and a wheel change came in 1975. Some models could briefly be found with an emergency doctor sign attached to the roof with stickers to the windows. Here's how a real Audi 100 LS from 1976 looks. The Audi 100 was first developed by Auto Union and unveiled in late 1968. It was so named for its power output in PS and became the largest car to be produced by the brand since Volkswagen revived it in 1965. The initial four-door saloon was quickly followed up with a two-door in October 1969, then the stunning 100 Coupe S in autumn 1970. The coupe was powered by a bored out 1.9 litre overhead valve in line 4. The saloons were offered in base spec 100 producing 80 PS or 79 horsepower, 100 S producing 90 PS or 89 horsepower, and 100 LS producing 100 PS or 99 horsepower. Demand quickly outstripped supply with Audi's Ingolstadt factory at full capacity. This led to Volkswagen setting up an additional production line at their own Wolfsburg plant in summer 1970, making the Audi 100 the first water-cooled car to be produced there. In March 1971, the 500,000th Audi had been built, and the 100 had become the most successful model in the company's history. The original 80 and 90 PS 1.6 litre units were replaced for 1972 cars by a new 85 PS 1.8 litre engine. Meanwhile, the 100 GL was introduced, which featured the same 1.9 litre engine as used on the Coupe S. It had a facelift in 1973 for the 1974 model year, featuring a smaller, squared off grille, angular front bumpers, and a revised tail light pattern. There were a couple of bodywork blisters evident on either side of the casting, curiously found situated on each rear door. In addition, you'll note that the A pillars had also split at their bases. Both of these issues needed addressing, so first of all, I smoothed off those door bubbles. The 1975 model year base Audi 100 was renamed the 100L and received a 1.6 litre four cylinder from the Audi 80. The C1 Platform 100 was replaced by the new C2 generation in 1976. The C1 was built in both Germany and South Africa, where production commenced in 1972. It was sold in the US from 1970 in LS spec as either a two or four door sedan and with a 1.8 litre 115 horsepower engine. It was increased to 1.9 litres in 1972, but power dropped to 91 horsepower. Base and GL models were added, along with automatic transmission. The lineup returned to just the LS in 1974, with power increased to 95 horsepower with fuel injection and the addition of regulation safety bumpers. It was replaced in 1977 by the C2 100, but was renamed the 5000 for North America. The Coupe S was never sold in North America. Overall, just shy of 800,000 C1 100s were built, and just over 30,000 Coupe S's. The C2 generation launched with an inline 5 engine in 1976. As well as the two or four door saloons, a new five door liftback car called the 100 Avant was offered. The Coupe was discontinued. By the end of 1977, the 100 had become the first Audi model to reach 1 million units produced. The top of the line Audi 200 with its naturally aspirated or turbocharged engines first appeared in 1979. The renamed 5000 was sold in the US with twin round headlamps for the first two model years before switching to rectangular ones. It wasn't until 1983 that Audi's diesel engines were available in all US states 
as the naturally aspirated diesel engine did not meet Californian emission standards. These were only available as a 5-speed manual until this point, when the new turbo diesel were arrived. In total, almost 1 million C2100s were produced, with over 880,000 of these 4 doors. Just over 50,000 were 200s, and just under 50,000 were 100 Avants. The third generation arrived in September 1982 with improved aerodynamics. The two-door saloons were discontinued, and the 100 Avants were now wagons instead of hatchbacks. This switch in name would be designated to all Audi estates from this point forward. Audi produced over 1 million C3 platform cars up until 1991. The final 100 C4 platform arrived in late 1990, but by 1994, in conjunction with styling upgrades and changes to nomenclature, the 100 was renamed the Audi A6. The platform, also known as the 4A, continued to be produced until 1997. Notably, the C3 Platform 100 was produced in China by First Automobile Works between 1988 and 1999. They were also built and sold as Honkies between 1989 and 2005, with 2 or 2.2 litre Chrysler engines. They weren't sold as 100s, but had ridiculous long alphanumeric model names. So here we are at the reassembly stage. Next I need to balance the doors in position one by one. They are retained by cast metal and the plastic interior when it arrives. This is a terribly fiddly job to do with these early Siku castings that have no brace that runs between the doors. Lastly, all I need to do is attach the base. And it's secure. So this is how my Siku Audi 100 LS incorrectly labelled 100 SL looked. Despite looking like a fairly solid example, there were some issues with this casting, such as the lumps underneath the paint on each rear door, and the splits in each A-pillar. I find this an incredibly attractive casting, and I've been lucky enough to drive in my brother's friend's 100 LS, albeit tastefully modified and lowered. But here is my completed restoration, back in a full glossy coat of clear over Tamiya TS20 metallic green. I've polished up the base plate that incorporates all of that front grille detailing, which was as satisfying as ever. I've eradicated those lumps and bumps on the rear doors by a bit of sanding so the sides are now silky smooth. The window piece isn't perfect, there are still blemishes, but it is an improvement. And I've secured the A-pillars by re-gluing the splits, then leaving the casting under a bit of pressure in my vice overnight. I'm pleased with the outcome on this rebuild. What do you think? Leave a like if you agree, and drop me a comment with your thoughts. Subscribe if you want to see even more restorations and customs, and help support the channel by pledging on Patreon or YouTube memberships. Cheers to my existing supporters, but all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.